Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with another episode of Dave's Faves. Now, first of all, I have to thank all of you who posted comments in my talk about my Bach problem. It's so nice to know that I have so many people willing to run to the rescue to help me resolve my problems. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I just had to ask myself, why would anyone in their right mind want to listen to the St. Matthew Passion when you could be listening to Verdi's Unballo in Mascara? I mean, now there is a masterpiece. I, let's not kid ourselves, seriously. All that moaning and drooping and misery and when you could have lightness and fun and 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 fortune tellers and a murder plot and infidelity and oh my goodness this is what music's really about isn't it i mean i think so and i adore unballo and mascara yes now unballo and un mascara let me just tell you a little bit about it was composed around 1859 and it was the opera that gave Verdi the most trouble of any in his career because of the censors because censors theatrical censors they were everywhere in Europe in those days and in Italy it was a particular mess because Italy was not a unified country so every little area and duchy and kingdom and the Austrians controlled some of it and the others controlled some of it and the Pope controlled some of it and and all of them had their own censorship different censorship ridiculous censorship and the plot of Unballo in Mascara was a remake of a previous libretto by Eugène Scribe the French guy who in the 1830s turned it into an opera Gustave the third which was set by Aubert now it's a true story it's about the assassination of the Swedish king Gustav the third well, royal assassinations were not exactly acceptable opera plots in most Italian territories with nervous aristocrats running them. And so Verdi ran afoul of the censors. And so they had to keep moving where the opera was happening. And they wound up sticking it, believe it or not, instead of Stockholm in Puritan Boston, and, I mean, can you believe it? And, you know, on Boston Common, there's there's a gypsy fortune teller, right? I mean, it's just, you know, Ulrika is her name, by the way. It's just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. But Unballo is just such a fantastic opera because it has such a wide range of music. You've got Ulrika, the kooky gypsy fortune teller, who tells Ricardo that, you know... They're out to get him, and of course he doesn't believe it. And it's just, it's just, oh, it's just wonderful. The interesting thing about this also is the soprano role, the lead soprano. After um, Ulrika, it's Amelia. That's her name. I get all, you know, these names in these operas, I get all messed up, you know. You know how many Leonoras there are? Oh, my goodness. Anyway, that was an odd couple, a question on the odd couple, by the way, a trivia question, because you've got Leonora in Beethoven, you've got one in La Forza del Destino, you've got one in Il Trovatore, you've got them everywhere. Well, this one is Amelia. Amelia is a fascinating role. And the reason Amelia is a fascinating role is because she's a genuine dramatic soprano of a type that Verdi did not often use. I mean, Verdi had his own brand of soprano, or, or eventually it became known as the Verdi soprano. And the Verdi soprano par excellence for much of these latter half of the 20th century was Leontine Price. And she recorded Unballo and Mascara very, very successfully. It's a very beautiful performance. But for my money, my pick, my favorite version of this story um, is sung by Birgit Nielsen. And the reason is because I just think it's fascinating to hear Birgit Nielsen do Italian opera, stuff that she didn't normally do. I mean, she did a little Puccini. She did do Aida. 
you know, she, once in a while, you know, but very seldom. She was such a Wagnerian soprano. But the role of Amelia was perfect for her voice. And so this ballo is my ballo of choice. And it's actually very interesting to compare the two because you've got, you've got um, uh, the same Ricardo, <laughs> It's just like sort of, okay, you've got Carlia, Carlo Bergonzi is, is Ricardo. It was one of his signature roles, a very elegant, decent guy with fastidious taste and a certain lightness of heart. It's a perfect role for Bergonzi, who was known as the thinking man's tenor back in the days when tenors were not known for thinking much about anything, <laughs> actually. But anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. So, but anyway, yes, so you've got Bergonzi in both, which is lovely. And then in this, in this one, you also have, let's see, Cornell McNeil as Renato. And here you've got Robert Merrill as Renato. And you've got Ulrika is Shirley Verrett and Ulrika is Giulietta Simunato. I mean, they're very, very good cast. But the most fascinating is Oscar. Oscar is a trouser roll. Trouser roll means uh, it's a girl dressed as a guy. They're usually given to young men, um, you know, to characters who are young men. So their voices haven't changed, get it? Or they're just supposed to be young. The most famous one is Mozart's Cherubino in The Marriage of Figaro. And Strauss loved trouser rolls. He just loved them because they added to that feeling of artificiality that he so prized in his operas. But in this case, in, in this one, you've got Rary Grist who sang the finale of Mahler IV for Bernstein. And in this one, you have Sylvia Stallman, who sang the finale of Mahler IV for Schulte. So you've got competing Mahler IV sopranos, both playing Oscar. I just think that's so weird, isn't it? Anyway, this is conducted by Schulte with the Santa Cecilia Orchestra. And this is conducted, this one, the price on RCA is conducted by Leinsdorf with the RCA Italiana Opera Orchestra. Now, they're both marvelous performances. They really are. They're just delicious. But I like this one because of Birgit Nielsen. I just think it's fascinating to hear her take on the role and very, very successfully, and to hear that laser-like voice with her impeccable pitch just blast her way through it. It's fantastic. Because, of course, Amelia is far more vulnerable and sensitive a soul than is Brunhilde. You know, I mean, Brunhilde could be a teamster. You know, she's sort of like, you know, a truck driver or, a, you know, she's, she's a lady wrestler or something like that, you know? But Amelia is very feminine and, and Nielsen was kind of a bruiser herself and she actually does this exceptionally well. It shows you a whole other side of her artistic personality. So anyway, when I want to listen to the St. Matthew Passion, I pull out Un Ballo in, in Mascara, sung by Nielsen, Bergonzi, McNeil, Simeonato, and Stallman, conducted by Georg Schulte on Decca. It's just wonderful. It also has, by the way, some wonderful anticipations of, of Mahler. You know, like the big climax to the development section in the first movement of Mahler 2? You know when it's da, 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 the embryonic form of that's in here. Mahler got a lot of his inspiration from Verdi, not least from Umbalo in Mascaro, which he conducted numerous times during his days doing uh, provincial operas in provincial opera houses. But this is not a provincial opera. This is a masterpiece. And, I, I, you know, you just sit there and just enjoy the living daylights out of it. It's so much fun. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.